Okay, I'm going to show you how to do these uh, edge pieces. I marked the back of this because, quite frankly, I have a hard time telling which side of that headliner is uh, the correct side. I'm going to take this and lightly spray. Well, I say lightly spray. I'm going to spray that. And once again, I'm using this contact adhesive, a high strength 90 3M product. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry, and then we'll put it on my little uh, special rail here. And you can see this rail is made so I can push this down in there with the fabric so it folds it. And uh, that little slot, I just put it on the table saw and ripped it. But uh, that uh, allows it to fold up real nice. Okay, here we go, many minutes later. Tick tock, tick tock. And I'm going to take this piece of cloth and I'm going to put it on my jig like such and I'm going to make sure that's in the picture and maybe I better move it down this way a tad after that glue dries a little bit it's not as sticky to work with and stuff so uh, anyway right past the end of it because I've cut this cloth a little bit long I'm going to go and press that down into that Like so, so it curves around the back side of that real nicely. Okay. And I'm going to start somewhere. And start pulling that around. But having that slot and something you can hold it against is really nice. I can put it in that slot. like such and just roll that down so uh, and it uh, makes a lip on that side so you uh, want it flat when you put it on so uh, anyway that's how you make those trim pieces that uh, that one goes on the uh, the door on the upper panel so uh, anyway As you can see, I put the beading on these uh, door pillar panels, and uh, I'm going to trim them, but uh, that's how you do the beading. Oh, I glued those on the back, by the way. Okay, uh, these go on each side of the uh, door on the inside, well, the member that uh, goes up the middle and uh, they've got foam on them and so you glue the foam on and then you spray it with your adhesive and you put your uh, your uh, headliner on there and things look good and I might mention the left hand side has this chrome switch in there that one needs to be cleaned up a little bit but uh, anyway uh, that's how those came out Okay, here's the good side of the car, but I'm going to zoom in on it. This is a nice wool blend, and uh, it's a real tight mesh, so that's uh, what the carpeting kind of looks at. I don't know if you compare it to, uh, that's the carpeting in my basement, but uh, it's a really tight mesh. Okay, today I'm here working on carpeting, and uh, you'll see I've got that flipped upside down. I put the piece of carpeting on top of that that I got out of the car, the original, and it was all yucky, so I'll vacuum that later. But you can see I cut that. Now, Hearst Automotive sold me the uh, materials here, and... Uh, 
they don't come wide enough so if you uh, lay it out and put all your pieces down you can come up with a pattern where you uh, don't need much and I'll tell you how many square yards here later on in the video I used but uh, you can see I duct taped it together but if you look real close here there's a seam there and I'm going to go out to a hardware store and get the heat tape which you heat up with a heat gun and it uh, melts and seals it. It's what carpet installers use. Now you'll see I laid these down and I have not marked the ones I've got laid there but uh, you can see on this one I've marked it and that's the piece that goes in front of the back seat and I mark them and then I cut inside of this black line here. So uh, now Hearst Automotive, uh, they're, it's expensive to get this wheat and wool look-alike material. You can go to any carpet store and uh, get whatever you want. And uh, the same thing, the reason I do this is uh, my uh, upholstery guy will hem it for me, but if I uh, charge him or he charges me to cut it out and put the patterns down and all that, it's a bigger bill, so I save a lot of hours by, uh, you can see I marked all the back slots, and I actually marked where the uh, steps go online. But to save money, I do this. I'm a cheap bastard, so this was one way you can uh, save a little money, and if you went, you could probably buy some $3.99 look-alike uh, polyester stuff and Nobody be able to tell the difference. So, uh, yeah. okay, so uh, I've got you on my selfie stick there. And uh, I'm going to butt this right up to that black mark coming across there. And I hold this down when I mark it. And if you're in an area like this, I suggest you mark all the little V's and stuff. See how that puffed up there? You want to push that down so you get kind of an anchor and don't move it as you go across. And take note there's a uh, board here running across the back of this. Right here you'll see that board. That's an extra support. Take note of those because you're going to want to put something back in there. So I'm all the way around, so we'll get rid of that. But you'll see I have a nice pattern. Some of them are a little, might have to touch up there. And then what I do is I get a pair of, uh, I call them carpet scissors, but it's kind of hard to cut. I've got some bigger pairs, but uh, this one really is good for getting in the corners and such. And I cut inside that black line because that is going to add a little bit on the leather and of course you're marking a little bit to the outside. I'm not going to push it through all the painful uh, it's probably going to take me an hour to cut all of these. Well it's probably going to take me a couple of days because my hands aren't what they used to be. But you got the general concept there. So if you get those cut out and I used uh, 16 foot 6 inches long of the stuff I got from Hearst and uh, it was 3 foot wide. Now I don't know how many square yards of carpet that is but if you lay the pieces down here you can uh, kind of figure out how you don't waste have a lot of waste in between or if you get a big piece of carpet it doesn't matter. So. Uh, this stuff was a little bit pricey though, so I'm trying to, they told me I'd screw it up and so they sent me an extra yard and that's just about what I've got left, so. Okay, you'll see here that I've got a vacuum cleaner. And this is gonna make a heck of a noise, but uh, what happens here is that old carpeting, it's just falling apart. Uh, what this car is a parts car and uh, it was a great parts car it didn't have a lot of rust on it so I 
thought I'd redo it, but uh, the carpeting was re just miserable in it. Uh, but anyway, I got that all uh, ready to cut out, but before I do that, I don't want to spread that all over the house, and uh, I'm going to hit this vacuum. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting this uh, foam. All of these uh, panels you'll see on the floor here, uh, they're actually uh, got a, it's a wadding they put in there. It's a, a cloth material, but it's kind of a pain to work with. This has a material on the back, and it's a little less than a quarter inch thick, and it's just about perfect to uh, replace that. But uh, anyway, I'm uh, trying to save a little money with my upholster, and I'm going to go around here and... Uh, mark on the outside of this. Now this backing's the side I will glue down. So uh, anyway I'm going to go ahead and mark all the way around there. The other thing when I get done I'll cut it out. I've got these scissors. Uh, they work real well for uh, cutting this foam out. It's pretty tough to cut. So uh, anyway I'll get those cut out and those go on the cloud three. Uh, that foam will go on the door panels, and uh, it goes on the uh, panels on the uh, doors, and uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to cut quite a bit of it out here. Okay, you can see as I cut these here, I uh, the part that glues on, I cut inside the black line and I use a sharpie to mark these because this side's going to be glued down. But you got to be careful with a sharpie because it might bleed through if you uh, uh, get it on the wrong thing. But this is what the back side of the foam looks like there. I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of those out. But you can all see it also on the floor there. See, I left all the black. So they uh, fit on. You don't want too much at the edge. The one exception was right around here, and this actually bends around for about an inch. So you got to watch places like that and allow for a little extra material. Okay, I've got my breather on again here, as you can see. But the other kind of glue I use is a high strength industrial. Moisture resistant, heat resistant, but it's a good contact adhesive. Uh, 3M is what I'm using. I got it at Lowe's. But I'm going to go ahead, and I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. But I'm just going to spray that. The edge wraps around, so I'm going to turn it over and spray it. I also mark the inside pattern of where the mirror goes so I don't have to waste extra glue. They say put three coats on, but uh, this stuff sticks pretty good, this fabric. I'm also going to spray the foam here. And this doesn't hurt the foam. Uh, some of your adhesives, well, this is quick drying. So you got about 10 minutes to make the contact. Oops, got a big drip there in my can. Dripping. But it soaks it in on this foam, so I give it kind of an extra shot going across. Like such. And you can see, uh, obviously, I glued the foam on. And the foam I glued in the same manner. I uh, did it like that. Now you've got a working time on this. I did get a couple of drops on there, so I'm going to make sure they spread out a little bit. But uh, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes before I flip that on there. 
Okay, bingo, tick tock, couple minutes went by. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just get it right where I want it. Like that. I'm going to go around and make sure I press the edges on. Especially this one. It bows up a little bit. And I'm simply going to take that and turn it upside down. Like such. I hope you can still see it. And I'm just going to go and spread that out. And get a nice curvature to everything. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry on out, and uh, and we'll flip it back over and uh, do the uh, other side. Okay, uh, this uh, one I spray painted and got the back on. You can see I got to cut the mirror out, and I've uh, kind of glued it on, but we'll have to go around here. And a lot of places what I do is I put it on there like it's going to go on, like such. Okay. And then I take the scissors right above the point there. And I'm going to cut all that material away. That way when I wrap it up there like that, it won't overlap and have a big bunch of it. So that'll, uh, I'm going to go around there and, you know, places like this, it's a vertical. So you're going to want to get your material put up and just cut down to the edge. You don't want to go past the edge because you're going to pull it over and split it so uh, once again this spot here it's going to have a kind of a funky thing so I'm going to pull that up there and right past there I'm going to cut that off you know and I've got plenty extra material here but uh, along this area you know, it's going to be uh, pulling a little bit, so I'm just going to cut a few V's in well above the, just so it doesn't overlap itself, but uh, I'm going to cut them above that there, the edge of that. It always pulls a little when you bring it in, so it'll go a little farther in when you pull it in like that. See, they come up over the top. See, it's right there. If they're not like that, you're probably uh, looking for a little trouble. You'll be able to see it below. And we don't want to be able to see them from the other side. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go on around here. I'm going to pull this corner up like it goes and cut it. So I'm going to work my way around here and uh, then we'll uh, go out and, oh, then I'll have to cut the middle out, but uh, we'll do that too. Okay, uh, you can see there I've got all kinds of uh, slits in it. Well, I'm going to pull it over. But the center here, to get it started, I'm just going to take and try to get the scissors in there someplace. Now, I'm cutting it from this side, as you'll see. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is uh, I don't really want to cut it from the other side because I can see just how far to cut it from this side. And back in the corners, you want to cut back in the corners like that so you can fold it up. But I'm going to go ahead and cut around the edge of that where I can fold that up and have enough to glue on there. 
Yeah, I'm going to say a few things about the mirror before I put it in here. Uh, on the back here, you can see this metal strap. That's what causes that line, and most old clouds have that. And uh, Anyway, I uh, cut some material. I just got it from a fabric store, and it was just rolls of uh, cloth fabric. And there's these little pins that hold it down, and also there's some tape around it. Uh, basically, this slips in this hole and you'll notice here I've already put in the I don't know if you can see that the switch there but uh, that simply uh, gets I'm going to stand up here and press that in but it basically goes in like that and then there's uh, screws from the back that hold it uh, one of them the one on the right side gets one of these chrome fancy uh, cigarette lighters. I take the fuse out of my cigarette lighter line sometimes. Uh, my wife hates it because she charges her phone and stuff, but I don't want anybody using those, so I usually leave them out of the car if my wife's around. But uh, you'll also see the uh, LED light bulb here, and I use these little LED light bulbs, and you can buy them in the right base. I measured these and looked at the dimensions online, but, uh, you know, these will pop in those lights. Now, you can't have the light bulb in there when you shove the, the mirror down in there, but uh, anyway, uh, Oh, the mirror, I had it cut at a local, there was downtown St. Louis, there was a club that, and a store that uh, basically would give you lessons in, uh, you know, cutting glass and doing the letting and that kind of stuff, but uh, I had them cut some glass and I think they charged me about $15 for uh, each mirror, so uh, I did put new mirrors in there. Okay, some more of the stuff we've got here. Uh, right here is a uh, side panel. Uh, goes on that door pillar. Uh, one thing I should mention here is the ends of these have to be flat on the back. Because if they uh, you don't get them glued where they come forward, they tend to press back. And when you shut the door, it gives a door restriction and it'll tend to want to pop these uh, out here and these uh, of course pop in. Uh, I made this uh, trim here and glued it on. Uh, there were staples in it originally. Of course there's one right and left hand side. But I made a bunch of this beading and I do it so when it's flat on this side it lays even. So, uh, you know, one side it, it's a little flatter than the other as you roll it over. I uh, take it and roll it. But there's various pieces of this around the door. Uh, this is all around doors and such. So there's several pieces of that I made. Uh, these go underneath the uh, seats on the outside. They have spacers in them, but they simply are leather glued to the pieces of wood. Uh, there's various other pieces of trim that go in. I think these go back by the back and uh, kind of trim that off. There's also, uh, I don't even know where this goes, but this had a piece of beading in it, so I took a piece of nylon rope and made my beading, and when I figure out where that goes, I'm going to go ahead and... But anyway, I made it. All these things save you money with your upholster if you do it. This stuff all gets trimmed like on the front of the door edge. This gets wrapped around and glued, so after I get the body back from paint... I'll go ahead and glue those on, but I cut all that and got it ready, and that way I uh, don't have as many hours in with the upholster. Okay, I'm, uh, next piece I'm talking about here is the back sill. Uh, it goes by the back window. Uh, this is cut out. There's a speaker that goes through there, and I'm kind of authentic, uh, so I get my speakers and back rebuilt. 
but you can see I folded this over and cut it a little bit big but uh, uh, there's foam under this so I had to put foam on this one but this is quite simple uh, put the foam on and then I had to trim a little I cut it pretty close and then I had to trim a little bit about around the edges but that's how you do that piece okay more pieces uh, these go uh, in the back below the armrest and uh, I glued this side on but uh, they have to be loose because you got to be able to nail them in and then you'll glue this on and uh, anyway uh, you got to have one on each side so there's two of those I did uh, this is headliner and uh, these patterns go underneath the foot. There's one in the middle and there's a couple on the sides, but those get glued to the floor. So I went ahead and cut those all out and uh, got those ready to go. This goes in front, the antenna, if you got the top mounted antenna. Uh, this goes around the front and I simply glued headliner with spray paint wrapped it around and uh, that's basically what I ended up with so uh, there are some more pieces that I uh, didn't have to take to the upholster yeah and when I roll these you can see I use a half M foam and it's an insulating foam that's kind of you can buy at the hardware store but it's the same as that old rubber they used to use and I glue those together this end you can fold them over and have more of a finished look but quite frankly on the uh, Cloud 3 they just cut them off at the top and they put a little fingernail polish or something to match the color on the inside so uh, there you go okay I'm gonna go through a bunch of stuff here uh, real quickly uh, this is a piece of leather that's glued on. This is a railing that goes along the bottom of the door on the inside. And uh, the other side doesn't have anything on it because it's got that clean air intake. Uh, this is a piece of trim that's covered with headliner and it was just basically uh, cut to pattern and trimmed and uh, I've got a pair of good carpet scissors and when I get a big lump on these like right here I just take those carpet scissors past the point you know where you uh, don't want to cut it but in about a quarter inch I take those scissors and cut the lumps off of those uh, this is the uh, beam that goes across in front of the uh, glove compartment holds a steering wheel up as a matter of fact but uh, on both sides of this there's a short piece and this long piece and this gets covered with a headliner because otherwise you'd see that going into the glove box and uh, last but not least you can see there's leather inside my doors but here my picnic doors on the uh, picnic tables that go on the back of the uh, seats back of the front seats and I took a quarter inch staple and uh, stapled that all around. I didn't want to glue that because uh, it would be hard not to get it inside. And you have to make sure you point the staples towards the outside. If one of them breaks this outside wood, it's okay. But if it goes on the inside, it damages the shiny stuff. So uh, anyway, that's a few pieces that uh, I'm missing my, oh no, here it is. Okay, let's get rid of this. And uh, this one here, basically, oops, fell off the back. These uh, go on the bottom of the door panels and uh, front door panels, and they slide in this rail so you can see I've got this cut close where it will slide, but there's not much, uh, you know much of a gap so you got to be pretty careful when you glue those on the back of that just simply those aren't the sprues that uh, hold it on but they are a Phillips head big head sprue and surprisingly in this interior there's quite a few Phillips head sprues spread around which uh, the cloud twos this is a cloud three the cloud twos don't have that so uh, 
And last but not least, I uh, put the foam on the door panels. There's going to be carpeting down here, so you need a little gap since it's thicker than the leather. And uh, I did cut the carpeting, put the foam on here, so they're ready. And I've got a video out on patching these. I had a couple of places that were a little rotted, so... Uh, you know, I did patch those with a paper mache and a weatherproof uh, glue. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, ready to go to the upholster right there. So, uh, let's see if I can find any other parts I've done. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot. There's two more little pieces here. And those, uh, those door panels I showed you that slide on these rails... Those go behind those, and uh, anyway, I covered those with leather because they had leather on them when I uh, got them out of the car. Okay, here's another piece. You can see down here I uh, glued the leather on. I take a punch where there's a screw hole or something, and you can see I punch through there with an ice pick, basically. And uh, Anyway, that's the heating vent that goes underneath the seat on a Cloud 3. A Cloud 2, I don't believe, has those, but you can get air conditioning to the back through them, even though it's at the bottom. Uh, this is the car seat bottom, and it's the front seat, but I went ahead and had everything CAD plated, as you can see. I went around on the outside and I use upholstery they use for speakers to do this outside and I glue it on and then I trim it off to the pattern but it needs a padding and they used a thick felt but that stuff is uh, thick and works real well. So uh, I've got that ready to go to the upholster. I'm going to come over here to the top of the seat and you can see I've painted everything but these leather with a nail you know, a couple of nails, hold all this in, or hold the springs in, and behind that you can see there was some felt, but once again I used that speaker carpet, uh, big like trunk speakers kids use now, and I sandblasted and painted everything and then put it back together with the CAD plated screws, etc. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces here back from my upholster, so... Uh, that one's missing the little uh, handle that comes out of here that you grab onto, but it's easy to put on there, so I'm going to have him uh, go ahead and do that. And uh, that about summarizes the parts I've got done right now. Okay, you can see here I got a bunch of stuff back from my upholster. He did a real nice job wrapping those seats. Uh, this is another piece. This goes under the... Uh, uh, S3s have this. It's a uh, vent and actually gives you air conditioning under the back seat if you hook it up right. And I got my hem carpeting back. Got the back seat. And the little pull thing, uh, I don't have on it yet, but the backs kind of pop off. So, uh, got the little strip of carpeting there that goes below the back seat. And I uh, got some more, well that's the headliner on top of some more uh, of the carpeting. And uh, got a bunch of stuff laid out here, but this I'll just give you a zoom in. I mean basically I got most of the interior all laying down here in my uh, son's room who uh, moved out. And we're an empty nester now, so... Uh, there you go with the, the upholstery. Oh, there's the big piece of upholstery. I was excited to get that done. You'll notice there's heat tape on that, and I had a professional carpet guy come in and uh, put those together, but uh, Hearst uh, did not have uh, carpeting. I mean, they had the wheat and wool imitation stuff, but uh, I shouldn't say imitation. It's really good stuff. But uh, it didn't come long enough to do that front piece of carpeting, so we had to do a piece of heat tape on it. So, uh, looks real good. Yeah, I'm putting this seat together here, uh, front seat. And uh, got all the parts sorted out and found. But a couple of pointers, I'm not going to go through how you do the whole seat. But uh, this thing gets a little complicated. There's a cotter pin that goes in there, 
and then this spring you can see how it goes in here this rides up against the bottom of that bar and just pushes it down a little bit right in here where it goes down and I'll zoom in on that in a minute it uh, has to get the carpeting out of there or it won't go all the way down this is going to go through this shaft here and through here now this pin is tapered so it only will go in from what will be the top of the seat so it'll go in from that direction and it's a tapered pin so uh, to get that out you have to tap that pin out in the right direction if you try to do it in the other direction it's a bitch to try to get through there um, so anyway I'm going to take my selfie stick and go over here and you can see right there where I've cut that notch out of that carpeting and if you don't cut that out of there when you shove this thing through the hole like that it won't go down far enough see how it springs up like that if you got the carpeting it won't do that so uh, there you go okay I think you can see right here I've got it in now I've got the pin started just like that and I'm just going to take and put that pin in there like that and notice the taper goes down so it gravity holds it in there it could never come up the other way uh, so that's a tip there. I'm going to show you. You got a couple of other tricky things on these seats. The uh, other really tricky ones putting this in. But uh, we'll get uh, cleaned up here and get around to that. Okay, the next thing we're going to put on here is the uh, little uh, pulls the spring to allow the seat to be adjusted back and forth. This gets a, a washer that's kind of a special washer on there, and it's a sleeved uh, bolt, as you can see. You go through. This part has to be up, so it kind of goes through one way. And uh, then you're going to have this on the bottom, which is a nut and a washer will be on the bottom side coming up. And I'm going to need to get that through there and through the hole. Okay, you can see here I've got everything tightened down. And it pulls this so it gets past the point it locks it. And it pops back into the hole there like it should. So uh, that's all adjusted properly. If you leave these two lot loose, they'll rattle a little bit. I tighten that so it's got a little tension in it so things don't rattle around a little bit. Okay, I'm uh, going to attach the two seats together. Now this gets a washer, gets a smaller washer, and then a bolt. It goes through this direction. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, it goes in right here mm -hmm. through the hole in the thing. And then it lines up with the hole. And up there. But we've got to get that washer in there. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's how it goes. As you can see, I've got that in there, and I've got that started. Got my spacer in there, and now I'm going to stick this side in there. Wiggle it on in there, and then try to get it back through the hole. spring okay I think I got it to where I can get it started now sort of like that they're a booger to get in there and I'm gonna get that started 
Then there's a separate uh, bolt that goes on each side where that spacer is. You're going to have to find the hole. Right there. And there's one on this side. I'm going to have to find the hole once again. Right about there. Okay, lock the seat there. Now, I've got all that on so I can uh, basically tighten it all down. Uh, I leave everything. Okay, went ahead and tightened those down. Next thing is, the guy that originally owned this Rolls complained about noise. And, boy, the Rolls Royce people just went kind of nuts trying to appease them. And they had this jacket on the... Uh, spring here which is kind of a, adds a pain in putting the thing on but uh, you know I'm realistic but I don't think this was a standard feature on the car unless you were a coach builder but oh, hold that sucker down right there we go the weather was grabbing it like that and I guess that keeps it from rattling there okay how you put these springs in I already got one in there but uh, basically there's a little notch right there and they ride in that notch I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to hook that and pull that tight and then I'm going to stick it through here. Actually, I'm going to stick it through there. And I'm going to make sure I can I'm gonna get a pattern there where I think I want to be. Right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make a loop out of that and I'm going to double it up because it depends how uh, good your wire is but uh, that'll be one loop you don't want to get too many because uh, you're going to have to cut it out of there when you're done so uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to go anywhere get off the raggedy end okay now I'm going to put that through there and I'm going to get the spring and hook it on that end. And I'm going to get it hooked in that little slot there. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull that down to the point it goes in there. And then I'm going to whack it a little, oops, I'm going to whack it a little bit, there she goes, and then I'm going to cut that off, and I'm trying to get that out of there, it gets caught under that spring a little bit, so I'm not real, uh, Maybe you don't want to bust the paint up too bad on my new paint on there. But that's how you put those springs together. And I don't know how you do it otherwise. That's a monumental task. The other thing I did here, we'll zoom in on. As you can see this screw down in here. They're a standard wood screw. But they have chromed uh, ends on them. So, uh anyway there's four of them one goes here one that goes there and two that go up in there and uh that just sticks in there that piece of wood so uh that pretty much finishes the seat up except for putting the uh bottom in it 
Okay, my phone's about dead, but uh, you get one of these, I call them a V head. Of course, everything on a Rolls Royce is a straight head. Uh, it doesn't have a Phillips head, it's a straight head, and it's just a wood screw. And like anything else on a Rolls Royce, they got that little foot pad on there, and they've got eight of them basically holding it on. Now, I left every one of those loose, so if I had to move it around a little bit, I could get it in there, but uh, that's the foot pad. Okay, uh, I'm here today, just the camera a little bit, uh, continuing to work on my interior. You'll see on this, I uh, brushed it on there. Uh, I use a contact cement, uh, good contact cement, interior, exterior cement. And I brush it on the leather, and I lay the leather, you'll see how I'll do this side, but uh, I lay the leather down, and then I take the board and put it down on the leather with uh, cement on both sides. But uh, you need some safety equipment here, so I may be a little muffled, but uh, you need a breather with this stuff. And I just take these, uh, I just take these uh, little cheap, I think they're 49 cent uh, paint brushes so I don't get too worried about them. But I'm going to wrap that around the edge of this so I'm not going to get too carried away. But I'm going to go all around the edge here and you'll see I'm holding this down. And there's a rationale for that. If you get glue, you don't want it to get on the good side of your leather. So if you hold all this down, you just get it uh, on the side you're folding over. And I use diff two different forms of uh, glue. I use a spray on. But on the leather, I find this soaks in a little bit better, and uh, you got to let it dry for just a couple of, well, a couple of minutes. So, uh, get that all good around the edge there. You can renew the glue, too, by uh, putting more on it. And since I've got so much running around that, I'm going to take a place here. I'm actually going to pick that up and move that over there. Now we'll let that dry a few minutes and we'll show you how it sticks. Okay, tick tock, tick tock. It's been a little while. And, uh,. I'm going to take this now and I'm going to roll it like this. I'll get a nice edge. If you do get a little glue on it like I did right there, you can just rub it right off like that when it's soft. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fold that on over. I'm going to continue to go around the edge and force it around. Like such. Okay, on these long edges, I roll them like that. Continue that. 
that to work around, but you get the general idea there of how this stuff goes on. Some of these where I get a little lump in the back, I don't have my scissors out with me, but uh, when you put them together, you're going to have to trim little pieces like that off, or when you put them together, you'll have a gap. And you can see how I notched all that and got all that nice and pretty. Okay. So that's how you glue stuff on with contact cement. Uh, Sure, if I got any glue places, I'll rub them off. And they're still wet. Yeah, it just rolls up if you kind of get a little place like that. You just roll it and it just comes off in a little... I must have got that on there when I was gluing the other, but uh, anyway. There we go. Now we'll show you how to do it the other way, the way with the spray can. Okay, I'm sitting here in the basement. Uh, You'll see I got that all glued on both sides and wrapped around and uh, anyway. Uh, this piece here goes on the inside and it's uh, metal. But I had to cut a flat piece out. You'd think you could use a strip and go around it, but uh, I think you're better off cutting a flat piece. Then you notch it, but when I notch that, it's kind of about a quarter inch back because as you wrap it around that edge and as we glue it down you got to take that material out or you uh it won't fit in right i'm gonna have to fix that corner i want to be in there for the material that goes over the top but uh a mirror goes in one of these but it's got the cut out on both and this is going to go in between the pieces of leather and you'll see uh, I marked the uh, here so I don't intrude on that with any of the leather. So if I get inside that black I'm uh, going to be a little bit in trouble. But uh, you can get these things a little bit, co I mean it'll be cockeyed where you don't cover one corner of the mirror. So. Uh, and this side does get the mirror, so it'll set in here like that. And I did get a new mirror from one of my local glass shops. Got me a little piece of mirror. And uh, on the side of the mirror, uh, these uh, particular cutouts are uh, cut in the middle. So instead of having one long one like that, you have uh, two cut ones. And then that mirror will set right there like that. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go out and I'm going to put glue on these. And it's leather, so I'm going to use the uh, paintbrush method. And just go right around the edge. I don't believe this here, it was taped in. The mirror had tape on it, but uh, that tape tends to pull the back of the mirror off so uh, it uh, shows after a while. I think in most of the Rolls Royces, uh, Silver Clouds, the back mirrors have a line to them because there's a piece of tape on them. If they didn't put that tape on there, they probably would have lasted better. But uh, Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get that glue, but that was cut out of a fat, flat piece of leather. You think, well, I won't waste a lot and cut a long strip, but you can't work that around. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, there you go. 
Okay, you probably won't be able to see it in here, maybe the edge of it. But this is the uh, wind uh, the visor. And uh, anyway, uh, after I glued the pieces, I put it down here, put a couple of flat boards on them. They happen to be walnut. They're nice boards. Uh, but put some weight on them, and I left them that way for a couple of days to smash all the leather flat. So uh, make sure they glued together good, and it turned out good. Okay, the sun visor, you can see here, I was showing you how to glue some of it, but uh, there's two layers of uh, thin wood, and I was able to reuse those, but if I need wood like this, the modeling airplane guys have it readily available, of marine plywood in various thicknesses. This inner layer of wood, I got a couple of layers of, uh, there's paper in here that allows the leather to, you know, glue without having the insides pull in, so it's a spacer, and I just used some poster board and cut out those spacers from, uh, I think I got it from Michaels, but uh, anyway, I'm pretty proud of that. I, uh, I'm going to, oh, uh, I should mention, this is the right-hand side. The left-hand side has a mirror in it that you had to contend with also. And I got that with the mirror cutting guys uh, that I talked about with the side mirrors. I also had them cut me a new uh, mirror for the uh, passenger. Sometimes in your life, there's uh, women that are in your lives. And uh, by the way, there's the cans were dragging in the trunk and a big bow to put on. But my crew of women up here, they're decorating my rolls and sticking labels on it and stuff. So uh, here we go.